In our last lesson on congruent triangles, I want to talk about isosceles and equilateral triangles and some specific things we have with those unique triangles. First of all, some vocabulary. I think you know this, but I want to make sure everyone does the legs of an isosceles triangle. Those are the congruent sides. So we know that isosceles triangles have two congruent sides, but specifically we call these the legs. And then the one left over is called the base. So even if it's not at the bottom of the triangle, um, that is considered the base. So for example, if I had said, and even though it doesn't look like this, but if I had said that these two are the congruent ones, then this would be the base and these would be the legs. Okay, obviously it's not drawn to scale, but that's what we mean by legs and base of an isosceles triangle. The vertex angle is the angle that's in between the two legs. Or another way you can think of it as it's opposite of the base. Okay, so this would be the vertex angle. Okay, and it's in between the two legs. So the two legs create the sides of that angle. All right, and then the base angles, I'm going to use a different triangle. So let's say in this triangle, these are the legs. The base angles are the angles that touch the base, so remember this is the base, and they are opposite of those legs. Okay, so these are the base angles. Okay, so now that we've got that vocabulary cleared up, let's talk about some theorems. We have the base angles theorem, and that says if I know, and I'm trying, it's talking about a triangle, if AB is congruent to AC, so we have those legs of the triangle, then angle B is congruent to angle C, so those base angles are congruent. Symbolically, um, if it makes more sense to you to write it this way, if I know this, then I know this, that those angles are congruent, okay? Then the converse of that, we're just going to be switching that up. So now, what I'm going to know first is that the base angles are congruent. So angle B is congruent to angle C. If that's the case, then I know AB, which is the leg, is congruent to AC, which is the other leg. Symbolically, you might want to write this. So if I know this, then I know this. Okay, so notice that we're ending in the same place where we know both the sides are congruent and the base angles are congruent, but what we start with is different, okay? So let's apply this a little bit. So in this diagram, we know that NL, which is right here, that segment, is congruent to segment SL. So that's telling me that middle triangle is isosceles and angle L is the vertex angle. And so if we know that, then the base angles have to be congruent. So going across from those legs, so if I'm going across from that leg, that's angle 5, and across from that leg, that's angle 11. So angle 5 would be congruent to angle 11. Next one, if angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, name two congruent segments. So now I'm looking at this top triangle, angle 1 and angle 4 are congruent. So across from them, those are the legs of that isosceles triangle. So ML is congruent to MN. And then for our last one, 9, angle 9 is congruent to angle 10 name two congruent segments. So now we're looking at this whole big triangle as an isosceles triangle. So that means that across from the nine would be this whole big side, MT. So MT is congruent to MR. And that's just using the base angles theorem and its converse. So there's a corollary to those theorems, and that's um, 
and remember corollaries are easily proven from those. If a triangle is equilateral, then it is equiangular. And then the converse to that then, of course, is if a triangle is equiangular, then it's equilateral. On your proof cards, I believe I say a triangle is equiangular if and only if it is equilateral. And that's because both of these are true, correct? So symbolically, you can do this. Right? That means equiangular mean, implies equilateral and then vice versa. Okay, so that's another way symbolically we can represent that. So let's apply both of these things that we've been talking about and see if we can solve for these variables. So in number one, we are given these sides are congruent, which means it's isosceles, and then the base angles are congruent. So 3x minus 11 would be equal to 2x plus 11. So if we subtract the 2x and add the 11, we're going to get x equals 22. Now we need to try to find this y. So we're going to go back a few uh, videos and remember that triangle sum theorem. Remember all the angles in a triangle have to add up to be 180. So if I plug my x back into back into these x's, I'm going to get this is 55 degrees, this is 55 degrees. So if I add those together 55 plus 55 plus this remaining one, which is not going to be 55, but it's, we know it's 2y. We know all of those should add up to be 180. So this is 110 plus 2y equals 180. Subtract the 110, and we're going to get 2y equals 70. So then y is going to end up being 35. So now let's do the same kind of logic over here. We have our two sides marked congruent, so it's isosceles. That means the base angles are congruent. Notice they didn't label this one with anything. So if that happens to you, then go ahead. As long as we have other variables going on, we can go ahead and label that x minus 2 as well. So what do all three of these have to add up to be? So x minus 2 plus another x minus 2 plus 4x plus 10 has to equal 180. So I'm using that triangle sum theorem along with the base angles theorem. So combine all these together, we get 6x and then plus 6 equals 180. Subtract that 6 and we get 174. Now we're going to divide 174 by 6 and that's going to give me 29 for x. Okay, so now that means each of these is 27. And then for that vertex angle, that's going to give us 126. And how are we going to help use anything we know about this? Well, we could use a linear pair with that. Or we could use the exterior angle theorem that 3y would add up to be both of those. So 3y could equal 27 plus 126, that's the exterior angle theorem. Or we could also say that 3y plus 27 equals 180, either way. All right, so if I do add those together, I'm going to get 3y equals 153. Either way you do it. So whether you're doing that first way or the second way, you're going to get 3y equals 153. And then divide by 3, and then you get y is equal to 51. So why don't you pause the video, try this one down here by yourself, and see if you can get the same answers as me. So hopefully you got x equals 10 and y equals 20. So 
in both of them I used the base angles theorem so we knew that these two angles in red were congruent to each other so we set that equal solve for x then I plugged x back in to get 40 degrees for each of those angles me personally, I used the um, exterior angle theorem for the 4y. So I, I knew that these two angles would both be 4y. And then that 4y is an exterior angle of the red one. So I knew that 4y should equal 40 plus 40. So let's do one more where we're going to do a proof. So we have ht in our diagram. ht is congruent to ha. And we're trying to prove that 1 and 3 are congruent. Well, what are we going to do to get there? Well, if HT and HA are congruent, that means this is isosceles. And then the base angles would be congruent, right? So we could say 2 and 4 are congruent. And then how do those relate to 1 and 3? Well, then 1 and 3 are vertical angles with those. So then we can use the transitive property. So let's do that. So we're given HT is congruent to HA. And then we said from there, we could say angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. And that's our base angles theorem. And then we said angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because those are vertical angles. And we also said angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And that's vertical angles theorem. So then I would like to add another step. I would like to say, okay, angle one is congruent to angle, or maybe not another step, but two statements here. So angle one is congruent then to angle four. So I'm replacing this with the angle it's equivalent to. And then from there now, I can see that angle 1 and, and angle 3 are both congruent to angle 4. So I can say angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 using the transitive property. So we will do more practice with this and a lot more proofs in class.